With the parks being closed, are you going through withdrawals like I am? Hmm. Spending magic bands and you don't know what to do with them? <laughs> what if you could build your own magic band reader? Just like the ones at the parks. To start this build, you're going to need the 3D printed parts, which you can get from my Thingiverse website, pictured here. Just download and start printing. The Mickey face and the outer ring you're going to want to do in translucent or clear filament for the light to shine through. You're going to need a magic band. Probably have plenty of those laying around. And an RFID reader. You can get that from the link below. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi. A power supply for the Raspberry Pi. And also a separate 5 volt power supply for the LEDs. This is a 3 amp power supply with the wire connector on the end. Going to need some connectors for the LEDs, like shown here, some wire, a 40 pin connector for the Raspberry Pi, because we're going to use two ports, the GPIO 18 and ground from the Raspberry Pi. You're going to need a speaker. Uh, if you want it a little bit louder, you can go with a powered speaker. This is just a simple speaker that you can get from the link below. Next is the LED strip. This is a 5 volt. But you want them close together, as you can see here. Sometimes they're separated a little further apart. But if they're close to, together like this, when we do this outer ring, it's going to look much nicer when it does the spiral. So use the link below to order the ones I have here or something similar. These are 5 volt. You're going to need a USB extension cable. That's for the RFID reader. And finally, you're going to need a HDMI connector with a audio out jack that's very important because we're only going to use in the audio out on this and the reason is we cannot use the audio out on the pi because it conflicts with the port we're using for the leds so that's all we need later on other parts we'll need is a box and a stand but we'll get to that later let's start building step one is to sand our parts so that they fit a little nicer Once we sanded everything, we're going to glue our outer shells together carefully. You want to line them up the best you can and slowly put them together. While our outer shells are drying, we're going to work on the face. Start with the ears. Get them in there nice and smooth. Make sure they're flat, even with the bevel. And glue these babies in. After you get the ears in, put the face and then the, the face plate in. Keep it smooth with the bevel. I find if you press with your fingernail and just go around, you kind of snap it in. It's uh, going to be a pretty tight fit. But you want to get it as smooth as you can. Just keep working around. Then once you're happy, just go ahead and glue it in. And it should look like this. Once you glue the mouse face to the outer rings, it's time for the LEDs. Look at the arrows, make sure you know you're going the right way. You want to make sure you're starting at the first arrow. And we're going to just measure right now. With the LEDs facing in, go all the way around. And once you get around the, the side, we're going to make a mark. And we just make this mark so we know uh, how many LEDs are in that inner ring. When we get to the software, you're going to need to know that number. So go ahead and mark it. And then once you have that mark, you're going to want to now measure for the interior lights. So we're just going to 
do a guess here. It doesn't have to be perfect. The outer ring has to be perfect. The inside doesn't have to be. So just try to get the lights in there best you can. And once you think you got it to a place where you're going to cut, we're going to make a separate mark on the LEDs so we can cut all the excess off. So right about there, we'll make our mark. And we're ready to cut. All right, so you don't want to cut on the first mark. You want to cut on the second mark. This first mark just tells us our outer ring count. So go to the second mark. Find it. And cut that baby out. Since we're not going to be soldering to this, it's just going to end. You don't have to be too neat about it. Just try to get right on that line that they make for you. And it comes apart. Now these LEDs have a sticky back to them, which isn't going to do us any good because we want the light to shine inward towards the ring like this. So make sure you have your counts right. Uh, write down those numbers. Write down the number for the ring for the first mark and then the amount of LEDs for the second mark. Here we go with the completed glue. The uh, interior just goes around on the inside like this. Doesn't have to be super neat. It just has to be facing in so that when it lights up, it will light up the face nice and bright. You want to keep that middle open for the next step, which is where we're going to put the RFID reader in. So let this dry before it's going on the next step. For the next steps, we're going to need our speaker, our RFID reader, and our USB extension cable. I went ahead and glued the RFID reader to the cable so it doesn't uh, come loose later and have to open it up and add it. The trick is to get the face as close to the Mickey face as you can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go this way. So while that was drying, I went ahead and glued my speaker in, facing down towards our speaker holes. Depending on which speaker you have, you may have to squeeze it in there somehow, but just get it in there, let it dry. And while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and clip these two wires. We don't need these. These are for power injection, I believe. Now we're gonna need the power supply for our Raspberry, our Raspberry, our 40 pin connector, some cable, some connectors, and our separate power supply for the LEDs. Remember that's the 5 volt 3 amp. It's different from our power supply for a Raspberry. So now I'm going to go ahead and put up the schematic for the wiring. And as you can see you need the, uh, the 5 volts from the power supply. It goes directly to the LEDs. The data goes from the LEDs to the GPIO18 port. And then the ground from the Pi to the LEDs to the power supply. This is our connector that's going to the LEDs. If you remember, our LEDs had white for ground, I believe. So you want to keep that straight. Here we go. Our plus five. Our data is green, black for ground. And of course, our wire in between is different. We're going to just maintain the data line should be okay. We're going to use yellow for uh, for ground, white for data. Red stays the same. And then down to our connections on the Pi. The white go into the GPIO 18 grounds. are going to come together, which is going to go to our power supply, which I'll connect in a minute. Make sure the grounds are connected together, otherwise it won't work. And once again, check the schematic I put up earlier. Make sure you got this wired right. Got our negatives together. Negative from the, the Pi and the negative to our LEDs. We got our data coming from the Pi. Going to 
the correct ports on our LEDs. And here it is all wired up. Power supply for the, the three amp connected to the LEDs. Power supply for the Pi connected to the power port. The HDMI connector with the speaker connected to it. And then our LEDs connected. And also our RFID reader is connected to the USB port of the Pi. I have a link below to my GitHub page to download the Magic Band so Reader software. Just click this green button and you can download the zip file to your computer. Download the operating system we need for the Raspberry. Go to raspberry.org and download the Raspberry Buster Light image. Highlight it here. Just click the download link and it will take a while to download. Once you have the image downloaded to your computer, you need to write it to the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Mac command line for this. Uh, if you don't want to do it this way or you don't have a Mac, you can use uh, Windows programs that will do it. All that's listed on the download page that you got the image from. So I'm just going to use the DD command and then once I type this out, it will take a little bit to run. I'm going to go ahead and cut that for time. Once the image has been written to the SD card, we need to do two more things. First, we need to create a file called SSH, and this tells the Pi to start SSH for us. Once again, I'm going to use the Mac commands, and I just need to create a file called SSH in the boot directory on the SD card. Once that's done, the other thing we need to do is create a file in the same directory that tells us tells the Pi our Wi-Fi settings. So we create this file. And in here we will need to update your SSID and your Wi-Fi password. Set those two things, save the file, and you're ready to plug the card into the Pi and boot it up. Once the Pi comes back up, SSH to it and SCP over the Magic Band software you got from the GitHub page. And then the first thing you're going to do is run the install.sh. This will take a very long time. Two hours later. Once that install is complete, you want to edit the Magic Band.py file and scroll down to where you see the pixel counts and update those two values to what you counted when you were counting the LEDs when we were doing the install. The first is just what's in the outer ring and then how many pixels beyond that for the Mickey face. So go ahead and update those values. Then the last thing we need to do is edit the rc.local file as you can see here. And then scroll down to right before the you see that exit zero and add this line. Now I know a lot of people are going to complain I'm not using the right RC startups, but this works just fine for this purposes. And type this line, save it, and then reboot your Pi. If you did it right, uh, when you plug in the Pi. The face should blink three times once it's done booting. So let's see what happens here. We'll take a second. One, two, three. And there it is. Yoda's wearing a magic band, so I have to use this one. Amazing. Welcome home. 
I could do this all day long. Stop it. Get some help. Some other things we can do is we can change the code so it identifies the magic band and plays different colors or sounds based on different different magic bands you have because they each generate a different ID. So that code would be easy to do. If you're interested, drop me a line and um, I can share that code with you. Or we can turn on lights We could, since it's got Wi-Fi. Uh, we could do all kinds of things. But right now, I just have it doing this. And here it is on the stand, which is a piece of PVC pipe and a block of wood. If I had to do it again, I would definitely use Bondo and sand it down and paint the uh, whole thing so you don't see those cracks at the top. But let me know if you build it. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell. Here's a list of some of the things we'll be building in upcoming videos. See you next time.